here's how to load the Affinia Mini Digital Label Finisher and get the best performance out of it. Slide the roll onto the core holder and ensure it's flush with the backing plate. Tighten this knob to secure the media. Thread the media through the front of the rubber rollers right here. Once it's through, tighten it down with this locking lever. Make sure it's in the second setting. Now, your lamination loads in much the same way as your labels. Just slide it onto the upper core holder offset from the backing plate by just enough so the laminate does not extend beyond the edge of the label stock. This is why laminate is typically at least a quarter inch narrower than the media. Before you tighten the knob, pull the lamination down. Make sure it is centered and do not extend past the edges of the media and press it down. Reduce any slack in the lamination and tighten the knob. Next, we'll use the forward media button right here to advance the media far enough to feed into the plotter. We need enough slack to go under the tension arm, through the guides, and all the way through the plotter. Make sure you're lined up with the first paper alignment arrow as you feed it through the pinch rollers in the plotter. Now on the other side of the plotter, we'll make sure we're aligned with the second paper alignment arrow, then adjust the pinch roller to the media width. Rollers cannot be over the edge of the media and cannot overlap the cut lines. Lock it in place with this lever right here, and press number two on the control panel. The head will detect the width of the media and you're good to go. So from here, we need to step back for a second to adjust the tension. Power the unit on by pressing this green button and then adjust the tension on both cores to one. Now jumping into the software, we just need to make sure that all our settings are correct. We have the right PDF loaded for our cut paths. The black mark that is printed on the media is inside the blue detection box and all other settings are set for this media. After our software is set up and we've completed the test cut, we can load the empty cores onto the core holders. Remember to press them flush against the backing plate and tighten the knob. Once we've completed our test cuts, we should have enough media to thread past the slitter near the end. We bring the media under the tension arm right here, and then we're going to go over the first aluminum roller and under the second aluminum roller. Pull the media all the way through and then lower the sponge and lock it into place. Separate the waste from the labels and pull it up and over the empty core. Now it needs to be nice and tight and then be sure to lower this pressure arm. Now we need to secure the labels to the empty core with a couple pieces of tape or you can use an extra label. Make sure it's flush with the backing plate. For the final step, let's adjust the slitter. Simply lower it to the setting position, adjust the slitter, then lower it to the cutting position. There are two back slitters underneath the matrix remover that can be set to remove excess material from the sides of the media. Once those are set properly, place the lever in the locked position. The waste will be removed with the rest of the excess material. At this point, remove the first output core and use cores cut to the final width of the media or slightly less. Now that everything is set up, ensure both modules are turned on. Now you're ready for production.